from Vienna, Austria, Avalanche, and from Dresden in Germany, Shooter Schulz. Together, they are blown up. The big man is in there! The Avalanche! Oh, no. oh, shooter is out! Look at the Avalanche! Look at the power of this! Look at the power! Our guest this week at Blown Up trained and wrestled at GWF in Berlin. He has much love for the old school wrestling. His favorite wrestler is Rick Root and Robert and Felix won't call him Cookie because he's the root of all that's evil Jared. Hello and welcome everybody. This is the Blown Up Podcast, episode 47. My name is Avalanche, aka Robert Dreisga, and joining me today, as always, is the beautiful Felix Shooter Schultz. Hello, Felix. How are you? Hello, Robert. I'm well. Thank you very much. And happy birthday. It's been some days, like five days when you have birthday, but still. <laughs> yeah, like, like almost a week, but thank you very much. Uh, you already congratulated me. I know, when but it was but, time to do so. But you didn't. and Wait. I would like to uh, to take the opportunity to congratulate you on your birthday, my <sighs> beloved podcasting colleague. Thank you very much, and to everybody out there, this is the first time. This is actually really the first time you congratulated me today. So thank you very much. Yeah, it is because I was just I was just uh, thinking about it because I I knew in the back of my head I was. I forgot something today, but I didn't know what it was until you brought up my birthday. So <laughs> thank you very much for reminding me on yours. <laughs> yeah, that was my small little plug there. So oh. it's our both of us had birthday lately, so we made ourselves a small present, something a little chaotic, a little special though. As you can hear, it's an episode in English again, which is the first episode since David Starr, as we, yeah, which was like over two months ago. So please excuse us on our a little edgy English today. But what is our present today? What who is our guest? Our guest today, as you already mentioned in this very special episode, and in this case, I mean we always have like special episodes, but today is like a really special episode because we we've got evil Jared Hasselhoff, very well known from the Bloodhound Gang, from World Promi Wrestling, or from the German Wrestling Federation. Yes, that's insane. Evil Jared Hasselhoff with us today. Thank you very, very much to Dan of Doki Doc who helped us put this whole thing together and brought us into contact. Thanks, Dan. You're a great guy. Speaking of great guys and gals, of course, uh, thank you very much to everybody who followed us uh, on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, also on YouTube during the last uh, weeks. We really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, or uh, hit the like button, please feel free to do so. We would really appreciate it. And without further ado, everybody have fun and enjoy the talk. You don't have to worry about getting taken to court. This isn't America. <laughs> That's true. But um, so, how is it? Like you, you already said us uh, said to us that your day didn't ev uh, didn't much change over the last couple of weeks, except there's like a worldwide yeah, pandemic. Well, you know, I used to go out and do live shows on the weekends, but normally during the week I wouldn't do much. I mostly sat home and uh, played whatever uh, whatever was big on PlayStation that week. And uh, yeah, that uh, really hasn't changed all that much for my routine. What is the last thing you played? Uh, right now we're playing uh, Division 2. Oh, cool. Like Pretty online. Uh, a lot of GTA online. And uh, just a couple weeks ago we started, I got a group together, we started redoing the uh, the raids from Destiny 1. Oh, I've never been into Destiny. Sadly. Oh, oh the, the, I mean, Destiny 2 kind of sucks, but Destiny 1, the raids in that were great. <laughs> Cool. Like, are you doing Twitch or something, or is it just private? Yeah, we do it on Twitch. Oh, cool. 
See? Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, I got in with these guys from Rocket Beans, and every Saturday night, since we can't go out and do live shows anymore, we have uh, we have online beer pong. <laughs> I've seen that. Yes. Which, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not as good as having a live show, but it's better than nothing. And we get to get drunk. Everyone likes that. <laughs> That's a good thing. How is you? How are you doing in this beer pong tournament? Uh, right now, we're about evenly matched. I think. I think I I won two of them. Uh, the guy from Rocket Beans won two, and on one we teamed up because uh, who wanted to play as a team? I think Jan Kop Jan Kelpen and uh, Max Beerhals. Jan Kelpen, the the guy, the host from uh, German Ninja Warrior. Oh, okay. Him and Max Beerhals wanted to play as a team, so we played against them. And, and like, I was watching like the. Kevin was putting up these videos on Twitter beforehand, and he looked like one of those trick shot beer pong videos where he makes every shot and they're off the walls and stuff. But when it came down to the actual game, he kind of sucked. We, we, <laughs> you know, we <laughs> we took them in straight sets. But so we, yeah, yeah. So I'm not doing too bad. Uh, you already mentioned that you you and the Rocket Beans guys doing something together, and the last thing I saw was you and Krogi going to wrestling training and doing blind boxing. Yes. <laughs> By the way, yeah, he, he, like he had showed me some videos of him, and he was really drunk, and it was at the GWF show, which I think was either at Huxley's or at uh, Best All Kreuzberg, and it showed him going up and either shaking a wrestler's hand or smacking a wrestler in the head, or so somehow. He almost got involved in the match, so I asked him if he wanted to go to uh, to training, and he was into it. So took him over, and we did a little uh, training with Ahmed and the guys. And you're doing this training for a while now, right? Yeah, yeah. When I when I first moved to Berlin in 2016, or no, 2006. Sorry, 2006. Uh, I was looking for a, a, a jujitsu class because I was really into that. And I couldn't find any jujitsu. I guess they have it in Berlin now, but they didn't back then. Like I went to like Japanese jujitsu. I don't know if you've been to that shit, but it's like it's yes, like different. taekwondo or something. You know, it's more like dancing than than yeah. Uh, you know, I've done that. <laughs> and my German teacher at the time said there were some guys that did uh, wrestling at the same place where she did her aerobics class. And she said wrestling. I thought she meant like you know like amateur wrestling, like Greco Roman. I was like, okay, well that's you know that's about as close to. Uh, Is to grappling as I'm probably going to find, and I went there, and it was not Greco Roman wrestling. It was GWF training. <laughs> and I was like, oh wow, pro wrestling training. This is great. So, because I couldn't find jujitsu training, I started training with those guys. So, if I'm not mistaken, you you've been training with the GWF since two. 2006 on and off you know it's not like i go there every week but they uh i wasn't i wasn't training to do any matches i was just doing it for fun and then like maybe five or six years ago uh pro Sieben had the idea that they wanted to have uh, a match uh with me and yoko against uh herman the german and torsten legat so i started training seriously there to have an, uh, an actual match But before that, I was I was just training to fuck around. Yeah, I was I was watching that back to uh, kind of you know like inform myself for for our podcast here, and I I was uh, honestly surprised because it, it was pretty obvious that you haven't done this for the for the first time. So it was really obvious that that you had training to to some extent. Well, luckily we had Herman involved in the match, so he made everybody look uh, pretty good. You know. Was that he has no idea what he's doing? He, he he seemed to look like he knew what he was doing. Was that a live show back then, or was it like taped? No, no, it was live. Cool. <laughs> That's so yeah, it was live, and I don't know. They had uh, an audience. It was I don't know. It was probably a couple thousand people in the audience, and they had to cut it down. Like they uh, they told us that we had we could do it in like 20 minutes, and we're like, yeah, yeah we can do it in 20 minutes. And like when it actually came down with all like the yelling at each other and shit and fucking around. I think our segment went on for like an hour, and they had to cut like almost all of it out. <laughs> oh, that's it. But it's something to have the, your fir very first real match in front of like thousands in the arena or what, and I don't know how many people watched it at the TV, like on the yeah. television. That's oh, something. Yeah. Great for me. I got to smack uh, Herman over the head with a with a computer keyboard, and I got to give Klaus the pit stop. Uh, that was like the highlight of my career at that point. 
Why did you choose to go for the pit stop? Have you uh, have you been a big Nasty Boys fan? Well, the think? Nasty Boys are, are from the same part of uh, Pennsylvania where I'm from. You guys know each other? Uh, I've never met them, but my buddy owns a tattoo parlor, and I forget whether it's Sags or not, but it's either one of them lives in the apartment above his tattoo parlor, so he talks to him all the time. Okay. <laughs> But I've never actually met the guys, but I figured as an homage to our shithole part of Pennsylvania, I would do the uh, the pit stop. And it's a, it's a pretty awesome move, too. Well, the, the, the world is pretty small, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, um, was, like, this world promi wrestling thing, was that also, like, the um, the place where the idea sparked of you having matches for the GWF later on? No, but I, I guess uh, not for me it wasn't, but I guess maybe for, for Ahmed he saw, oh, well, I guess this guy can do okay in the ring. So like at, shortly thereafter, he started offering me uh, actual matches for, uh, for GWF. And you did like two of them, right? You did it in 2017 with Ahmed? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, uh, 2017, I was teamed up with Ahmed against, I think it was Rambo and Johannes Lucas. Yeah. And then uh, again in... Just last two, year. Yeah, I think last year it was me and uh, uh, Jeff Kaplan against group Anarsi. And the, like, the big problem with me being able to do matches, why I couldn't do it from the, from the beginning, is because I work as a DJ on the weekends. And normally every Saturday, we, uh, I'm out doing, doing live shows. But mm -hmm. now that uh, I think the, the schedule changed... Because uh, because Festal Kreuzberg said, okay, well, you know, we need to have we need to make more money on Saturday nights because wrestling only goes from like you know six or seven to like ten, and they want to be open all night. So I think they're they're trying to move the shows from Saturdays to Sundays, and on Sundays I don't I don't have DJ shows, so I can start doing shows on Sundays now. So are you are you seeing you more often in in the wrestling ring now? Well, I was thinking about doing it. And then this coronavirus thing came along, so I guess that kind of fucked that up. Well, yeah. Well, at least for all of us, at least there's not not somebody just running away from everybody else. Yeah. So everybody's sitting at home. Um, like, how long have you been like a wrestling fan? Oh, oh, since the eighties. <laughs> Maybe even before the eighties. Yeah. You know, since since rock and wrestling came along. Really? Like, um, was it a thing in your family, or did you watch it, or was it just? No, but you know, we, when you grow up in America, you know, back in, the, and I, I was a kid in the 80s, and you know, right around the time rock and wrestling came on was when I was, I don't know, 11 or, or 12 years old. So uh, besides rock and wrestling, you had every Saturday, you had uh, WWF had, I forget what the shows were back then, I think like Superstars of Wrestling or WWF Wrestling Challenge. And then you also had all like the uh, the NWA shit and the uh, WCW. Although I don't know, I don't know if it was called WCW back then. But you know you had like the the, the one that was really popular was like you know, WWF with Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. And then you had like you know, the uh, whatever they called it at that time, where it was like you know Four Horsemen, Ricky Garvin, uh, Art Anderson, and you know, Ric Flair. I think it was it was back then it was NWA or WCW. But yeah, I think it, it, it. There was a time where it was like National Wrestling Alliance World Championship Wrestling, where it's like yeah, that that super long name. Yeah, my friend just called that the other league. You know? <laughs> um, but have you been to live shows back then, or mostly just television? Mostly just television. Like you know, it, it was. I lived out in the country. And I didn't realize that like a lot of those shows were taped in Allentown, and I could have gone up there to see it. But you know, you see them on TV, and they don't tell you where it's coming from. Yeah. And I realized like uh, Allentown, like the place where uh, Snooka killed that chick, that was like that's like 30 miles from my house, maybe less than that. Where is that? Like I, I have no idea where in the states is that? Which state? In Allentown? It's a little bit outside of Philadelphia. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, you know, it, there's a big wrestling heritage there. You know, not only do they, they do a lot of show filmings back then at uh, the Allentown um, Ag Hall and stuff, but uh, you know, in Philadelphia, up near where I went to college is where ECW Arena was, or still is, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you said you, you haven't been to, to much live shows, but I guess eventually at some point... You, yeah, once, once I got into college and moved downtown, then we could go up to the, the Spectrum in Philadelphia and then we could see shows all the time. So, so who who was running shows there, or was that like different companies running there? 
Well, we always went to, to uh, WWF shows then. So, uh, so around what time was that? That like... would probably be around like 1990, 1991. All right. So you're a big Hulk Hogan fan, I guess, or you were a big Hulk Hogan fan? I was more of a Piper fan. I like the heels, you know? <laughs> Ah, okay. That that would have been my second guess. But, you know, I thought Hogan was a little bit cheesy, but uh, Piper was great. So who else did you like? Well, who else was you were fascinated by? Oh, um, Ultimate Warrior, Rick Rude, Big Boss Man. But those guys were great. Uh, Killer Bees, B. Brian Blair, and Jumpin' Jim Brunzel. I thought those guys were great. Thought their shtick where they would uh, where they would switch the mask so the referee wouldn't know which one of them was in the ring. I thought, thought that was awesome. Like what? Yeah. What? What was it that fascinated you with wrestling? Oh, I don't know. You know, you know what it's like. It's you know, my my sister would would sit there and watch her soap operas, and you know, you, you couldn't be a guy and watch soap operas, but wrestling was like a soap opera for guys. That's true. <laughs> That's actually true. I st I still have to 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 process in my mind that you actually uh, just told us that Hulk Hogan was too cheesy, but you were into Ultimate Warrior. I, I still have to process that. <laughs> okay. It was pretty cheesy, too. But in, the, in, the, in the video game, in the WWF Superstars video game, his was the best character. So, you know, the, the one that came out in 88. I was born that year. <laughs> I, 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 I have ever, if you ever go into like a retro arcade and you see one of those machines, the Ultimate Warrior is the best, uh, okay, best character. <laughs> Big Boss Man is pretty good, too. I got a bunch of old like Nintendo games right next to me, but I don't I don't know if I have the one you were talking about. Oh, the, it, it was an arcade game. It, they, oh, okay. The Nintendo wrestling games sucked. They were horrible. <laughs> well, well, that's true. That's true. You can't, can't say anything about that, but still, they yeah, have... But, like, but you, you guys didn't have a lot of arcade games over here, did you? No, like not in really. America, well, I mean, I guess if you were born in 88... You, you wouldn't have had that, but uh, like in America in the 80s, like starting like late 70s a little bit, but like it really took off in the 80s that we would have these massive arcades where all the kids would hang out and you go in and you you'd spend your allowance in quarters on all these video games. And the first one that I mastered was uh, Matt Mania. I don't know if you played that one. No, never heard of it. Matt oh. Mania? Yeah, Matt Mania. You had characters in there that looked like Hulk Hogan, you had one that looked like, um, well, there was one called Coco Savage. I think he was supposed to be um, Kamala. And then you had the Golden Golden Warrior was supposed to be Hulk Hogan. And then there was a, uh, there was a karate fighter. He looked like Kerry Von Erich. So they all had, they, I mean, they weren't licensed, but they ripped off the, all the, uh, the characters that were popular of the day. And that was the first game that I could, for a quarter, play an unlimited amount of time on. I remember one time I was waiting for my college roommate to pick me up, and I played that for like six hours on one quarter. <laughs> That's a long time to wait to pick somebody up, I guess. Yeah, well, my roommate was kind of an asshole. <laughs> What have you studied on college? Uh, business administration. Oh, did you finish it? Yes, yes. And it came in of absolutely no use whatsoever in my life. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> sounds, sounds familiar. Yeah, well, the point of going to college, I thought, was just that you know we could get drunk every day when I was in high school, and then college was like an extension of that for four more years before you had to get a real job. I didn't realize until years after I graduated that I could have just got drunk every day and had a job and not have to waste that you know, forty thousand dollars on college. But um. I always forget that all that you'd have to pay so much money in the U.S. to get to college. Oh, it was cheap when I went to college. Now it's like forty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> so it's a. Well, um, when you said you like you moved to Berlin in uh, 2006, right? Yes. Can, why? Like, what made you go to Berlin? Why Berlin, especially? Okay, well, I come from Pennsylvania, and uh, I don't know, have you guys been to America? Yeah, yeah, been to Pennsylvania right. even. <laughs> so you know what it's like. Uh, America basically closes at two in the morning, except for New York, New Orleans, uh, Las Vegas, and Miami, yeah. which are allowed you're allowed to drink all night. Everywhere else in America closes at 2 a.m. So I'm a hillbilly from Pennsylvania. So I'm used to the bars kicking us out at 2 a.m. And uh, so we get over, we start, I get in a band and we start touring. 
And we play in Berlin. And we play at this club called SO Sex and Dreutig in Kreuzberg. Yeah. You ever been to this place? Yeah, we've done shows there. We've done wrestling shows there. Okay, so you know across the street is this place called Frankenbar, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we would get out of the shows. And sometimes we wouldn't get done till like 1.30, 2 o'clock. And we'd go across the street to this bar while the, while the, the crew is loading out the equipment. And, you know, it, you're not getting kicked out at 2 in the morning. That bar is just getting rocking at 2 in the morning. <laughs> You know, and it's fucking, it's packed. There's chicks dancing around on the bar like it's a coyote. Ugly. You know, and we can get wasted. And if we had a show that was close the next day, like we didn't have to be, like if it was in Dresden or Hamburg or whatever, they let us stay in the bar until noon the next day. And I was like, wow, this, this is fucking, this is awesome. And someday <laughs> I need to live somewhere near this bar. So now you're living near this bar. Yeah. Yeah, so then, you know, at 2006 rolled around. And, you know, I wasn't really planning on living full time in Germany. It was just like, you know, in Pennsylvania, we have these guys called Mennonites. You, you heard of these guys? No. Is it like. Uh, a... not, okay, the Amish. You heard of the Amish? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, these guys are like the Amish. But, you know, whereas the Amish are not allowed to have televisions or cars or, or phones or any of that shit, Mennonites can have all that shit. But the one thing they are not allowed to have is alcohol, which is weird because like the Amish, they come from Germany originally. And what German doesn't enjoy alcohol? So anyhow, these guys are all over the place in the township I grew up in. And uh, it's not just that they don't believe that, that they, the Mennonites should drink, shouldn't drink alcohol. They don't think anybody should drink alcohol. So, if, for every 10,000 residents in Pennsylvania, you're allowed to have one liquor license to open up a bar. And normally, people will save up their money and open up a bar. Unless they're Mennonites, where they'll save up their money, they'll go buy a liquor license and put it in their underwear drawer. So, nobody else can open up a bar. So, in a township like mine, where there should be 30 bars, the Mennonites have all the liquor licenses, so there's only three bars. So, instead of being able to just walk down to the corner, get drunk, and then stumble home, you got to drive 10 miles to get to the bar. Which I'm thinking the Mennonites are fucking themselves too, because it, like it's not just heathens like me that are getting killed in drunk driving accidents. I'm sure Mennonite kids are getting drunk, drove over in, in drunk driving accidents because you got to drive ten miles to get to the bar, you know. And there's no taxi, there's no bus, there's no U-Bahn. You know, it's either you sucker one of your friends into being the designated driver, which doesn't happen very often, or you come out of the bar, you look around, you don't see any cops, you know, you go for it. And sometimes you sometimes you, you get home okay. Sometimes you end up in jail. Okay. And, you know, and, How and, often have you been in jail? Well, I it, it hasn't happened to me. I, I got I got arrested one time, not for drunk driving, although I was drunk and driving. But it was, <laughs> I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't I wasn't 21 yet, and they caught me <laughs> drinking. But they, they they didn't give me a DUI charge. But they still took my license. But it, technically, it wasn't a DUI. But When you get, in Pennsylvania at least, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the country, but in Pennsylvania, the first time you get caught, you lose your license for 30 days. The second time, you lose it for 90 days. And the third time, you got to go to jail for 30 days. And I didn't really want to go to jail for 30 days. So I figured I would just get a place, get an apartment somewhere. And so for a couple months out of the year, I could stay there and go out and have fun at bars and clubs. And then the rest of the time, I would just live out on my farm. And I figured, you know, I... Uh, I lived in Los Angeles and I lived in Philadelphia and I knew those both those places both sucked. I didn't want to live there. And uh, my manager lived in New York, so I used to have to spend a lot of time in Manhattan and I knew I didn't want to live there. So then I started thinking, why not Berlin? Makes sense, actually, yeah. <laughs> if you think yeah, about so it. We were, we were on tour in 2006 and the tour ended in October. It ended in, in Munich. And when everybody else went home, I'm like, fuck this. And I threw out my ticket. And bought a ticket for Air Berlin, flew up to Berlin, and uh, started living in a hostel, and uh, started walking around town looking for an apartment. And then, as you do in Berlin, I saw a bike that wasn't locked up, so you know I kind of <laughs> borrowed it. And then you know, I could I could spread out my my search a little bit further, and eventually I found a place that was uh, was close enough to the Franken Bar that I uh, yeah that I rented it. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like um. When did you finish college? In 93. 93. What did, have you done after? Yes, when, you were, when you were five years old, I, <laughs> I had already done time. <laughs> What have you done afterwards? Because I read on Wikipedia that you joined the Bloodhound Gang in 96, I guess. 
95. Oh, 95. Okay. Yeah. But what have you done those two years afterwards? What was your plan? Okay. Well, uh, what what we did, what we used to do, like the way that I met the guys in Bloodhound Gang was I had like this punk rock band and uh, I went to college with the singer. And we would have parties at my house. And our philosophy was always five bands, five kegs, five dollars. Right? And then, so we'd always need to have bands to put in the basement. And uh, Bloodhound Gang was just one of those random bands. And they were horrible. They were, they were like a poor man's Beastie Boys. Five of these white guys rapping over a ghetto blaster, and they were absolutely horrible. <laughs> you know, and we had pretty big parties. You know, we'd have 200, 300 people at the parties. And they would not go down into the basement when Bloodhound Gang was playing because the band was so horrible. Like, I used to have to haul the fucking keg down there, you know, like the Thos, all the way down to the basement. You know, those things ain't light. And put that behind the band to get people to go down there. And they still wouldn't fucking go down. You know, they'd be waiting at the top of the stairs. And I'm like, yeah, you know, the beer's down there. Like, yeah, uh, we'll wait till the band's done, then we'll go get out here. <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right, this is, uh, this is not working out. And so I had them play there a couple times, and every time they were horrible. And then one time they came in there, and I was going to be at the end of the... I was going to wait until the end of the night, and then be like, you know, you're nice guys, I like you, but uh, yeah, your band sucks and you can't play here anymore. But then they brought in uh, this new guy, and he like changed everything about... Not just about the band, but how I thought about music in general. Uh, he was... Uh, I forget what his name was. But this was probably 1991, 92. And the guy was completely, like, full-sleeved in tattoos. Like, the guy was completely covered in tattoos back before people were doing that. And he was only wearing uh, his stage outfit was just, like, hip hip waders. You know, like those those rubber pants people wear for fishing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, let me know if I'm going to Schnell. Uh, because I can go Langsamer, but it's a no. long story, so I want to get it out as quick Yeah, sure. Possible. Don't worry. Okay, so... Well, as soon as the band starts playing, and like all, my band's shtick, like my band was pretty horrible too, but uh, our shtick was once we got done smashing our instruments, with like all the punk rock bands did then, we would also smash garbage that we'd found around town the previous week. So we'd smash televisions and microwaves, and we never cleaned the basement. So the floor was covered in broken glass. So the first thing this guy does is strip butt ass naked, and then he starts rolling around in the broken glass. <laughs> right? And then he plays Switch'em. Are you familiar with the game of Switch'em? No. Uh, you stick one thumb in your mouth and one thumb up your butt. And then <laughs> you switch them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes, yes, I get it. I get it. Now I get the concept of Bloodhound Gang. You get, you get music and a show. And I was like, okay, all right, fair enough. All right, you guys can play here anytime you want. All right, so that was, that was how I originally uh, started to think of the Bloodhound Gang as not the worst band I'd ever seen. So after I graduated, uh, I moved out to the country. I was done with the city, and I, I rented a farmhouse. So instead of a like a house downtown, I had a house out in the, the woods. But we still did the same thing, five bands, five kegs, five dollars. And I ended up uh, getting a job as, a, as like a, the marketing manager for some phar pharmaceutical company. Like boring shit where you had to shave and cut your hair and wear a suit and tie to work every day. And it was work. But we were still having the, these parties. And um, the, the, the farm I lived in had a, a relatively big backyard. So starting around, like maybe a little earlier than this in the year, starting around March or April, whenever the weather was sort of nice, whenever we got, whenever me and my friends got home from the bar on Friday or Saturday, we'd get in back of one of our pickup trucks, drive around the neighborhood, and uh, you know that orange construction fencing they put up sometimes? Yeah. The yeah. plastic orange fencing. Yeah, we would steal all of that from the neighborhood, from all the construction sites, <laughs> until we had enough to go around the entire backyard. And then we build a stage and have a festival. And the festival was 10 bands, 10 kegs, $10. <laughs> and yeah, it was good. So uh, we did this for a couple years in a row. And then like the, uh, the third year we were going to do it, I had this neighbor. And he was like, I don't know, 60 or 70, like a bitter old grandfather that hated everyone in the neighborhood. Except us. He loved us because we had parties with teenage girls. So he was totally into us. And his hobby back in the 90s was listening in on, on uh, cordless phone conversations on his scanner. And I get home from work one day and he calls me. I was like, Jared, Jared, something is gone now. We got to go over to the, we got to go over to the courthouse right now. I'm like, well, go fuck yourself, dude. I'm going to eat Simpsons. I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to watch the Simpsons. And I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to jerk off before I go to bed. He's like, dude, we got to go right now. 
So I'm like, oh, all right, all right. So I get in Walt's truck and we go over to the uh, township building. And it turns out his uh, his intel from listening on cordless phone conversations, right, they are about to secretly vote on a law to make it illegal for us to have our festival. And this is like two weeks before the festival is going to go down. Now, these assholes, they could have spent the, any time in the previous 50 weeks, they could have said, okay, well, we don't like what you're doing. Uh, we, we, we think that it's, you know, a hazard to the public safety or whatever. So, you know, maybe we, we'd appreciate if you guys didn't do it, which, okay, fair enough. But, you know, they're trying to, to, to secretly sneak this law in two weeks before we're, we're supposed to have the festival. So I was kind of pissed. So... You know, they're about to vote on law, and I raise my hand. I'm like, uh, excuse me, I'm the guy that lives over that house. Um, yeah, you, 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 you're telling me you're voting on a law to make it illegal to have any more gatherings in the town? You're like, yes, sir, that's what it's, uh, it's going to be. It's a law about the gatherings. I'm like, oh, really? So uh, what's it mean? You can't have any more than 100 people? Like, yes, sir. Gatherings of over 100 people would now be illegal. I'm like, oh, really? So anyone wants to have a, a wedding in the township? That's now illegal, right? It's like, no, sir, that would be exempted. I'm like, okay, so anyone wants to have a funeral, a graduation party, a apartments, that, those sort of things. Those are all illegal now, right? And the township supervisor's like, no, sir, those would all be exempted. I'm like, but so you're telling me, essentially, what you're saying is that it's only illegal for me, personally, to have a party at my house. It's like, yes, sir, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you asshole, you just fucking said that out loud, you know that? <laughs> Like, you know, I don't know. You guys are like, you know, these redneck township supervisors. But, dude, I just graduated and my, my minor was pre-law. And I know there are certain things like discrimination law and the U.S. Constitution that says you cannot pass a law that only applies to me, to one person. All right? You pass this law. This will be the biggest mistake the township's ever made. Law passed unanimously. So now there's a law that it's illegal for me to have a party. So I was like, holy shit. And I'd already spent like a, a thousand bucks, you know, uh, you know, with, with band guarantees and yeah. the advertising and shit. So, yeah, and this is like, back then, a thousand bucks is a lot of money. And I'm like, okay, well, we're fucked. <laughs> and uh, the singer from my band was like, okay, no, no, no. I, I think uh, I think, uh, I think, think we should not take this line down. I'm like, fuck no, we, we shouldn't. So we're like, well, let's find a lawyer and see if we have any, any options here. So we start calling around and... Uh, Finding lawyers, and the singer from the band is like, "Yeah, I got a, I met, met a guy. I called a lawyer, and he said that, uh, yeah, he wants to meet with us." So we go over, and this guy is from, uh, it's called the American Civil Liberties Union. I don't know if you heard of them, mm -hmm. but you know, we go over, and the guy's like, "Okay, well, explain your case." And I'm like, "Yeah, my township passed a law that, that only applies to me." He's like, "No, seriously, what do they do?" I'm like, "My township passed a law that only applies to me." He's like, "Yeah, but you know, they didn't say that out loud." I'm like, "Yeah, they said it out loud." <laughs> He's like, oh. He's like, yeah, dude, I'll take your case and I'll take it for free. So, dude, the township. And I don't know if, I don't know if the, the township was expecting that we would just sue them in like the local circuit court where, you know, where the township lawyer's cousin is the judge and comes through like every couple of weeks for traffic tickets. But we're like, yeah, this, is, this has to do with the Constitution. So we can sue them at federal courthouse in Philadelphia. So we're like, okay. So we took the, the county to federal court. And uh, I had, my job when I was in college was a bike messenger. And back in the early 90s, like mostly fax machines existed. So mostly all bike messengers did was, was to deliver legal briefs that couldn't be faxed from, from lawyers' offices to the courthouse. So I was always at the courthouse. So I knew all the guys down there. I get there to, to go to court and the bailers are like, hey, Jerry, what are you doing? I thought you moved back to the country. I'm like, yeah, I ended up having to sue my township. The township's lawyer, on the other hand, had never been in a federal courthouse before. And we get there, and it's like, it's probably mid-end of July, because the festival was going to be in, in August. So it's the middle of July, so it's pretty hot there. And the township lawyer, big, fat, sweaty dude, uh, with a bad toupee, is there. And he's sweating so bad that his toupee is like starting to, to slide down his head. And you know, they, they call the case, and immediately the lawyer's like, okay, the, the township would like to repeal the law. And our lawyer's like, oh, yeah, you're going to repeal the law. But before you do that, you're going to pay our, our, our clients $15,000 for filing frivolous legislation. And the lawyer's like, the township will agree to that. So <laughs> all the money for the township that should have went in to, like, road repair and removing snow and shit ended up get, going to us. And I gave it all to the lawyer. He did an awesome job. And they had to they, – not only did they have to remove the law from the books – they put a restraining order on the township supervisors. They couldn't come within 100 yards of me. <laughs> so they, we end up, they have to let us have this party. But in the process of, uh, in the process of 
being of going to court every day, I couldn't go to work, obviously. Yeah. So, you know, before it happened, <clears throat> and I knew I was going to have to get, be testifying in court, I told my boss, who was, by the way, the first European dude I'd ever dealt with, some Swedish asshole. So I tell him, look, Hoken, uh, you know, I know uh, I'm supposed to be working and stuff, but uh, I got to go to court. I'm not going to allow these the township to make a mockery of the Constitution. So I need to go to court every day. So I, you know, if I need to take a leave of absence or take my summer vacation early or whatever, you know, I, I you know, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble at work. He's like, well, I do not want you to have to worry about your job. <clears throat> that is why I'm going to fire you right now. And I'm like, dude. I just fucking sued my township, you asshole. You don't think I'll sue you? He's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I will, I, I, I will, I will make you a deal. Uh, I will say you are laid off, right? So then you can collect unemployment. You get like 75% of your money and you don't have to go to work anymore. I'm like, hey, now you're speaking my language, buddy. <laughs> That's a so, good deal. So like the day after we won in court, we have the, we have the, uh, the festival and I got fired from my job, so I don't have a job anymore. And the band that was headlining the festival was Bloodhound Gang. So, you know, after the, the, the show, we're in the pool, you know, we're just shooting the shit. And they're like, oh, you don't have a job anymore? No, nope, no job anymore. And Bloodhound Gang had just gotten signed to uh, to Sony. And they're like, yeah, we're going to go on tour starting next month. Uh, you want to you wanna drive the van? I'm like, yeah. Like, they're like, you still got that van from your van? I'm like, sitting right there. So I ended up, I uh, started out driving the band. And then within two shows, a bunch of guys quit. And they're like, oh, you've been on stage before. You want to be on stage? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I end up being in the band. And that's how it all came together. That's great. So like, with, with a guy sticking his thumb up his butt and suing the township. <laughs> it's a natural progression of events, I guess. Yeah. It's a boring story, one you've probably heard a thousand times before. <laughs> yeah, it's the usual, you know. <laughs> it happens to everyone, I'm sure. I guess I've... I don't know if I ever talked to somebody who has a, had a law against this person, especially or uh, lonely. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I think most people are a little either embarrassed or smart enough not to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm not very bright, so. <laughs> so, um, you joining Bloodhound Gang, I, I think, obviously, was a very good life decision, wasn't it? Um, I per personally, I wondered, like uh, uh, looking back um, at the WWF Attitude Era, mm -hmm. um, which was like on an all-time high in like 98, 99, which I would say was also like a very good time for the Bloodhound Gang. So was there ever like any negotiations for, for you guys to be part of the program somehow? Because no, no, they like, never came to us. I know ICP was involved and I know that... <clears throat> Like I think Beetlejuice and that the, that really tall guy from the Howard Stern show were involved, but they never mentioned anything to us. That, that's strange because like later, like I don't know, like maybe ten years later, they did stuff with the Jackass guys, and it seems like a natural thing in those times when they were very edgy to exactly. talk to. Exactly. I would have loved loved that, but I guess um, yeah, I guess we were too crap for them. <laughs> ah, they get they had other people. There. I don't think that's the problem. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess yeah. You know, looking at looking at the, the the level of talent they had back then. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> That's strange. That's really strange. Like an, another question about wrestling, I wanted to ask because um, are you are you still watching wrestling or are you kind of off the circle? I'll be honest with you. I do not watch. I, I don't watch uh, WWE at all anymore. Yeah. Just because I, I can't really. I mean, maybe it's because I've gotten too old, but I can't really relate to any of the characters they have on there. AEW, I watch sometimes. Uh, Jim Cornette's got, I forget what it's called, but he's got this new one that looks a lot like an 80s show. And I watch that sometimes. And I watch every episode of Behind the Titan Tron, every episode of Dark Side of the Mat. And I go back and I, on YouTube, they have all the old matches from the 80s. So I'll sit there for hours watching all the old matches from the 80s. Superstars of Wrestling and Wrestling Challenge and all that old shit. Like, what, what was the Jim Connett one? That NWA, isn't it, right? Isn't it? Uh, I, I don't think it's called NWA anymore. I, I, could, I could figure out what no, it is. No, Robert knows uh, stuff like Tarkin, that. You know Tarkin from uh, uh, GWF? Yeah, sure. Yeah, he turned me on to it, and he's like, "Dude, you got to watch this." And and he he brought the he he we came over here one time, and he put it on, and it was fucking yeah, it was great. Reminded me of being a kid again. Battle? What? It's in I real small arenas, and it's like a lot of like shoot interviews and stuff, and not I, like I, I think I think it's NWA Power. 
Yes, um, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's like a, Isn't it a by... reboot of the of the old studio yeah. shows. Yeah, and by and I think Cornet Cornet was like on four episodes before he was like stripped off because he was making a, yeah, maybe a comment that shouldn't be done in 2020, but yeah. <laughs> Something horribly racist, Don Cornette, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. Like, um, who, what, who's, uh, what's the guy's name who's doing those shows? Um, the guy from the Smashing Pumpkins, right? How is his... Oh, Billy Corgan. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that, that's all I watch these days. But I, I mean, I guess, I guess WWE is good for the kids. I mean, the, the shows are... are, are uh, they, they sell out all the time. I know the, the first time I went to... A WWE show here at uh, Mercedes Arena, like uh, they, I don't know, the guys like their biggest stars, like Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns and um, uh, who's it, Dean Ambrose. I don't know, they just don't really do it for me. Yeah, you know what, Dean Ambrose, this man must be insane. The guy's out of his freaking mind. He's not insane because he sticks out his tongue once in a while. That's not, that's my, not my definition of insane. But, oh, whatever. Well, to be fair, your definition of insane might be very different from from. But well, you gotta be able to show people your tongue, you know. <laughs> but have you ever so thought there's parts of his anatomy that he could stick out that would make you think he's a little more insane, but his tongue is not one of them. <laughs> Perfect for the PG style of WWE, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you're like you're a big dude, like a tall guy. You're great in training and but i met was there ever you thinking like going into wrestling seriously or was it just nah because bloodhound gang is working well why would why, why change that yeah yeah well, when bloodhound i mean maybe if the bloodhound gang hadn't taken off i may have gotten into it but yeah when, when bloodhound gang started doing well i'm like you know you're not gonna be able to do both so it's one or the other just one question uh, out of the context How do you? How are you holding fit during those strange times where you cannot go into the gym and stuff like this? Oh well, my, my buddy has a gym in uh, in Shonavida. Oh okay. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's got a boxing gym down there, and he said that because he wasn't he's not able to have uh, the anybody come in anymore. So he said if you wanted, he would just let you borrow equipment and take it home. So I brought back a bench and a uh, like a big rack and a bar and a bunch of weights. So okay. I just do it on my back porch now. And is it the same gym you guys did the blind boxing in for Rocket Beans? Yeah, 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 yeah that's the one. Oh, okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ferdinand Pilz is the guy that owns it, and he uh, he's the former uh, he's the welterweight junior cha German junior champion, and he's. He's gonna. I think he's going for the uh, the the welterweight championship again once uh, once we can start having boxing again. Okay, cool. Yeah, he's got a gym. So if anybody wants to go, you just let me know. We'll go down there. We'll hang out. It's a good time. Yeah, it's quite far away. I'm living in Dresden. Bertel is living somewhere in Ruhrgebiet in Essen. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No, no. But thank you very much. Das ist das ist <laughs> yeah, how's your German holding up? You uh, Nick Schlett. Nick Schlett. <laughs> Das ist But, yeah, du weißt, uh, ich, ich, ich war in, uh, in deutscher Schule, uh, bevor Corona begonnen hat. Und ich war in, uh, in, in der Klassenzimmer und das war okay. Aber danach, wenn die haben gesagt, dass man nicht in die Schule gehen können und wir müssen wechseln zum Zoom-Meetings, uh, uh, dann habe ich gesagt, nah, nein, nein, danke. Ja, I get that. Um, One question, because um, Dan Maiman of Doggy Dog, who helped us with this talk, thanks and to Dan. Yeah, the great uh, Daniel Maiman. Yeah, he's <laughs> the big guy. He uh, told us to ask you about the Russia story. Ooh, oh, oh. The thing about the Russia story is um, you're talking to a guy who not only is that a law passed against him, but is also forbidden from ever going to Russia again. <laughs> I think I may be the first person that had a, a lifelong house for boot from, from Russia. Uh, since it had to do with a festival in 2013 where I, uh, I ended up getting in trouble for rubbing a Russian flag on my butt. Uh, but legally, we're not allowed to talk about the story because it caused like a whole lot of problems over there. And it, uh, it almost caused the festival to get shut down. Uh, we closed down the airport for nine hours. And the promoter, who's a Russian dude, uh, got in so much trouble that he's not allowed. He hasn't been back allowed in Russia either, even though he was born there. 
he's been hiding out in England what? till they they solve the problem with the with the promoters allowed to go back in. It still technically is in the court system over there. Oh really? And it, they said if they catch me in any country where they can extradite me to Russia, which Germany's not one, thank God. But if I go to like. Kazakhstan or, or, or Bulgaria or somewhere where they can extradite me. And they said they're going to put me in jail for 15 years in the uh, Arbeid's lager. Jesus. Like, but <laughs> Until we get that cleared up, uh, I'm not allowed to talk about it. How bad is it for you that you're not allowed or that you cannot go to Kazakhstan anymore? I'll tell you what, I, I didn't realize this, that we weren't allowed to go to Kazakhstan. And I went there. <laughs> and I went there. And, uh, you know, there's a, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but there's, Uh, in the the late '80s, or maybe the mid '80s, uh, back in the back in the golden age. In any case, uh, the Russians made an exact copy of the American space shuttle, and uh, it actually made it into uh, into orbit. And there's a couple of examples of the space shuttle in a secret bunker on the Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. And I heard about this, and I was doing a TV show for Proceb and Max. And uh, we got the idea to sneak in there and see if we could sneak into this bunker and film in there. Sounds and like we went a great in there idea. And it wasn't until, and you know, there was fucking, there's army guys everywhere. And if we would have got caught in there, because it's on the Cosmodrome and it's a Russian military base, we would have gotten fucked. And I didn't realize until afterwards, but if I would have got caught in there, I'd be, in, I'd, I would have gone to, I think I would have had to serve that 15 year sentence in Russia. <laughs> and maybe some more in Kazakhstan too. Well, well, I don't think the Kazakhstanis would care that much because it's a Russian military base. So I think they would have just turned oh. me over to the Russians. Listen, quite you know, a while. The show it's on. I think it's on the the Pro Seven Max. So you can see us going into the desert, the the Russian desert, like fucking idiots. <laughs> Living quite a life, sir. <laughs> Living quite a life. <laughs> Not bad. Um, Robert, are you going to ask about our Blown FM? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, since we have um, a musician on our podcast for the very first... No, and it's, it's actually, it's not the very first time because, because we had Daniel Malman on the show as well uh, a few months ago. Uh, but what instrument does have... Dan play? Sorry? What instrument does Dan play? Um, his voice. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I've I've yeah. seen him on I've I've seen him on stage with Limp Bizkit, so I guess that's. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, he's actually a pretty good singer. Yeah, <laughs> and I think he I think he he plays the guitar a little bit, right? Wait, right, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that, but maybe. Yeah, maybe I in his in I've seen a band before he started fucking around with uh, with Doggy Dog. Yeah. All right. So, what's so your musician we... question? Uh, we, we've we've got um, a Spotify playlist called BlownUp.fm where uh, all of our guests have the chance to put a song on there. That's, I mean, obviously it has got to be on Spotify. Um, okay. So, would you like to add a song to that playlist? Who thought it already? <laughs> Different stuff from ACDC uh, to... to some strange techno from the nineties. Oh, okay. Like just something maybe people should know about or uh, is not that famous maybe. Okay, was Dragon Force a popular band over here? I think they are from Germany, right? Dragon Force? No, they're British. Oh, uh, that might be true. Definitely British. Yeah, I would put a Dragon Force song on there because they, they were huge like for a while in America and then you never heard of them. And I don't think anybody... I never heard of a Dragon Force song in Germany. Uh, you have a, a, a special I've song? Never heard of that, uh, I've never heard of that band. Oh, honest. well, let's take a listen here. Let me... Let me see if I can find it here. <laughs> Special forth through the fire and flame. Yeah, this is yeah, the famous one. Right. Can, can you play that? Yeah, I can't play it on here now. Uh, you but, but um, no, because you don't have the gamer rights, or because uh, you don't have the technical know-how. No, because we're also on YouTube. This is kind of a problem sometimes. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put it onto the we put it onto the playlist if that's okay. Through the fire and okay. flames. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, put that's that on there. Crazy All song. Right. Cool. That's really a crazy song. And, and, and it's like seven minutes long. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, just, it's, like a, it's like a Zeppelin song. Just almost seven minutes of solo after solo after crazy solo. Yeah, and I mean, and it's like 200 BPM too. So like, can you imagine being the drummer in that fucking band? I tried it. but I played the drums. And then back in the days when I was like learning, I was like, okay, let's try it. Nope. 
<laughs> not, not, not a chance. Not a chance. I think the guy, the guy has probably like three kick pedals. Yeah, like this is insane. <laughs> Another thing we ask every our, one of our guests is, is there some movies or series or whatever you can just recommend to our listeners because something maybe that's overlooked a lot. What are you? Is uh, is happy big over here? Oh, is it the Netflix thing with the what is it? The yeah, cartoon? yeah, with the, with the with the little uh, uh, imaginary unicorn. I haven't seen it actually. I, I... Oh, yeah, yeah. You look into that. I think it's on Netflix. It was on Sci Fi in America, but I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it over here. Uh, if it's not on Netflix, you can always use a, a side loaded. Um, fire stick to get it. Not that I'm recommending that. <laughs> no, no, but I think it's on Netflix. I always see that it's recommended. Yeah, yeah I would recommend that because that show is really good. What else? Is something you watched lately that's cool? Uh, there's new episodes of Rick and Morty out. Those are good. Uh, Ozark, the third season of Ozark just came out. That's awesome. Um, 80s fans that uh, read the Watchmen book. I thought the movie was crap, but... The series the, that was out last year, that was really good. It's HBO, right? Yeah. Ah, yeah. I heard a lot of good about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was excellent. Um, the Boys, have you seen that? Oh, The, the Boys Super was... Show? I loved it. Yeah, great, right? So, I think that's enough for... Yeah, that's, that should be enough, that should be enough to, to, to fill, give people something to do over the weekend. Yeah, maybe not fill up the, the time uh, until the quarantine's over in 2025. But for this week, you're all set. <laughs> What else are you doing this week, sir? Uh, this week, uh, shit. What is this week? Um, yeah, just getting ready for beer pong. This week we have. Normally we play against uh, German uh, celebrities. This is the first week we're going to be doing against Americans. Uh, this week on the. Uh, Is this going to come out this week or is it going to... This is coming out this week or is it... It's coming out today, this evening. Okay, yeah. So this week, on this Saturday at 8 o'clock, it's going to be uh, from Jackass, uh, Ray Kian. Oh. And from CKY, uh, Jess Margera. Well, I think Ray's going to be on my team. Where can you catch that? Uh, it's on Krogi's Twi Twitch. So it's uh, Twitch TV backslash Krogman with two N's. Sounds good. So I'm having Rake on my team because he went to Penn State, which I'm pretty sure is where they invented beer pong. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's good. <laughs> Then I wish you good luck for that. And thank you very much for your time and for your hey, story. Thank you, guys. And the last words are yours, if you want. Okay. All right. Then we'll see you in the ring. Mm -hmm.